Hey golfers, Drew Mahold here with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing. And today, uh, he's going to explain a little bit about uh, the attack angle on your swing. Now, I actually just hit a few shots with three different clubs. Uh, and Thomas is going to kind of go through and explain to me, A, how my attack angle is, if it's good, if it's bad. Um, and then B, kind of explain, you know, the good and the bad actual numbers of the attack angles and how to improve yours. So, uh, Thomas, let's start with, I guess, the pitching wedge here. I hit a few shots with the pitching wedge. Um, what do you think about my attack angle? Yeah, so first let's just kind of define what attack angle is. Mm -hmm. So attack angle is kind of the up and down movement of that club head at impact. So generally what we'll see with a pitching wedge, the attack angle is going to be a little steeper. If you're looking on the track band numbers, you'll take a look here and you'll see that mm -hmm. shows negative. So negative means down. If that number is positive, that would mean up. Obviously, the closer you get to more positive number, the more up you are actually swinging. Mm -hmm. So typically, we see if the wedge be a little more down, iron's going to be kind of in between, and then driver. Hopefully, we can maybe see you maybe hit up on it a little bit to try and maximize sure. the distance. Um, coming back to pitching wedge, though. So pitching wedge, we got you to hit like three shots. Just one of you hit kind of a full swing, kind of take a look at some numbers. You take a look here and notice your attack angle was seven degrees down. So that's actually pretty normal for a wedge. Normally with a wedge, you're going to take a little bit more of a divot. When you take more of a divot, you're going to be maybe digging into that ground a little bit more. Um, it's going to cause that ball to spin. So that causes that sure. ball to spin, give you stopping power on, on the green. So you want to hit down a little bit. Now, if somebody was to hit down on it a lot, typically what we find with a wedge is we may lean towards wanting more bounce on the golf club. More bounce or a little larger, larger sure. soul. If someone is kind of, say, more of a picker, then would maybe lead towards having a little bit less bounce on the club. But that's pretty much the, the wedge cover. Okay, and with my 7 iron, looks like I was a negative 4.3 degrees of my average attack angle over the three shots. Yep. Um, where does that stack up in comparison to maybe what, you know, the 7 iron attack angle should be? And, is there, you know, where can I, I guess, improve there? So to give you a general idea, attack angle with a 7 iron tour average is about 4.5 to 5 degrees down. So you're pretty close right there. Um, negative four, that's pretty much telling you very, very neutral. Say, when you're playing outside, I'm guessing you don't take massive divots. Probably just more kind mm -hmm. of a little bit of, little bit of turf yeah. interaction. Probably taking a little bit of turf. That's kind of what I'd see with about negative four. Now we start seeing with a seven iron, that number getting kind of negative seven, negative eight. That's an indicator of that person kind of hitting down on that mat. You can probably hear it inside during a fitting. Person may feel it, you know, you know a little bit, you know, especially if we're hitting a certain turf inside outside fittings you, you'll notice you'll see the big difference so yeah. that's um that's what it would be like if you're hitting down on it a lot now if you're more of a picker you know start seeing that number getting more closer to a to a neutral number maybe negative one negative two that's the definition of more of a picker probably don't take much of it then so that's okay. kind of the, the general range for for seven iron but everyone remember keep in mind everyone swings differently oh, without yeah. you know taking lessons to make any of those major swing changes you know um, it takes a long time to make a change, so that's why it's important to get fit for something that's maybe got a little larger sole for someone that has, is more of a um, more of a digger or you know less sole and more of a pickup. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And then obviously moving to driver now, um, I'm right at just a little bit above zero at zero point one for the average of my three tee shots. Where does that fall in the driver category? Yeah, so driver's a very interesting one. Um, give you just a com couple of different numbers here. LPGA ladies, they typically hit up on the ball about three degrees. They don't quite swing at it as hard as, as the men do, but they're very, very efficient. They're very efficient to maximize their distance. Okay. So that's how they get their efficiency is by hitting up on the ball. Sure. Tour players, I think it's minus one is kind of around the average. Now, they have a lot of speed. If they hit up on it, the ball may not be able to be controlled as well. So that's why they don't quite hit up on it as much as, as those LPGA players. They certainly can. The ball certainly can fly very, very far from them if they do so. But they want to keep it in the fairway. Right. So that's kind of the, the attack angle piece. Now, if you're looking to maximize distance, you definitely want to try and hit up on the ball. You're right there. Your average was 0 0.1, so positive 0 0.1. So you're very, very neutral. Much rather see that number on the positive side than the negative number. Okay. Give you an idea. Um, your average amateur Trackman gave us gave us the data about minus two degrees. So that's new the average amateur will hit down on it about two degrees. I mentioned LPGA ladies, they hit up on it about three yeah. degrees. Now these ladies typically I know a lot of men don't like to hear this, but typically will outdrive a lot of amateur players, mm -hmm. amateur men, 
that have faster swing speeds than these ladies because of this attack angle. Sure. So that's why being very efficient is very, very important. Yeah. That has to do, I'm sure, with a lot of the spin created too. If you hit down on it with your driver, yeah. you're spinning the ball and it's... If you hit down on it, you, you, you probably lower that tee lower, otherwise you're going to hit that top of that club face. So if your club head is a lot of sky marks on that top, it means you probably hit down on it before the ball kind of pop sure. up. Best thing to do is obviously, you know, without modifying is to make sure you, you know, put that tee down. But that's essentially just putting a band-aid on it. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of players, you know, if they're more efficient at, you know, hitting up on it, they're going to catch that more in the bottom of, more in the middle or bottom of the face. They can tee the ball up high to make up for that. So they hit it still in the right spot. So you tee okay. it up high. Teeing it up high is a great drill, actually, to be able to improve your attack angle. You know, at first you may feel like you're just going to sky it every time. But it forces you to get that shoulder a little higher and force you to get it more on okay. the up. So that's you know that's important to, to pay attention to that. Okay, and then yeah. in a fitting, um, you know, let's say you get a customer who does hitting down on it with the driver. What are the type of things that you'll do to give them maybe the equipment or correct some of that those issues? Yeah, so you know, I, I talked about loft. So you know, typically, you know, if they're hitting down on it, hit location would pay attention where they're hitting on the club face. If they're hitting high on the face, I'm gonna tell them, hey, you have to tee this down. If you don't tee it down, you're going to always hit it high. So that's yeah. when we'll give them more loft um, to get that ball up in the air. Sure. Now, if someone you know, is really, really hitting up on it, um, pretty, pretty, pretty high, you can get away of teeing that thing up a lot higher. A lot of times, I'll give them a little pointer, though. So one little pointer here that's very, very important um, to try and hit up on the ball with a driver is, one, to feel like your left shoulder is slightly higher than your right shoulder. It's set up at force you at impact to feel like you're hitting more. Up, okay. so this is going to be higher than this is going to be. Sure. The other point I'll kind of bring up is where you have that ball position in your club. So if your ball position is too far back in your stance with your driver, so in more in the more in the middle, you're still going to hit down on it. You're still going to catch a little ground. So moving it forward, so putting up towards that left toe, also forces you to kind of get that ball more on that arc. Think of the golf swing as kind of an arc. That club is kind of traveling. And at yep. this point here, it's starting to go back up a little bit. Okay. So that forces you to get that ball up in the air. Okay. Okay. So that's, those two things really, really, really help. So if I'm trying to hit a high shot with my driver, I'll always kind of feel like I'm raising my shoulder, move that ball position up, and then try and feel like I'm kind of hitting up on a little bit. Golfers out there, this is a great example of why coming into second swing and getting a fitting for your swing is so important because this is just one simple statistic on TrackMan. And Thomas has provided us all kinds of information uh, to learn from here. So if you're out there, and you want to learn a bit more about your swing, improve your game, and stop into second swing, speak to somebody like Thomas Campbell and get a fitting. Um, also, if you learned a lot from this video and enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll have a lot more videos like this in the future. Thomas, thanks for your insight today.